Hello, welcome for our science lessons. Uh, we are proceeding with the topic of volcanicity and earthquake. In the previous time we, look, uh, we looked at volcanicity. Today we are going to look at earthquakes and how they are formed. Then also we'll be looking at um, the effect of earthquake on earth surface. Therefore, welcome. Uh, we will be able, first of all, to begin with the earthquake or earthquakes. What is an earthquake? An earthquake is a sudden vibrating movement that is found on earth crust, mostly along the fault line, and this is always accompanied by sound. An earthquake is a sudden vibrating movement of the earth crust along the fault that is usually accompanied by sound. We also have another term that is referred to as the tremor. There's a difference between an earthquake and an earth tremor. An earth tremor is a less violent movement of the earth crust. This one is mostly caused by the seismic waves. It is always caused by the seismic waves. Uh, all of these, all of these are caused by the seismic waves, uh, depending in various uh, capacity or magnitude in which they occur. But let us look at the, first of all, the causes of earthquake and how an earthquake originates. There is a, a point of origin over which the earthquake originates. That point is always called the focus. Focus is the point of origin where an earthquake originates. And a place directly on earth surface where the, the quake waves hit it is referred to as the epicenter. It is referred to as uh, the epicenter. That is a place where an earthquake strikes on earth surface. This is on earth surface where it strikes. It originates at a place of seismic focus and then it is strike on earth surface at a place known as the epicenter. I will demonstrate using a diagram so that we will be able to understand how it strikes the earth surface. I will just draw a simple a global surface. For example, this can be a point of origin we can refer to it as a focus. And then the quake waves drives, they can move in different direction. These waves can move in different direction. And some of them come and strikes here on earth surface. And as they strike the earth surface, they begin moving in that direction, in both direction on earth surface. And as a result of that, they will be causing some shaking and vibration on earth surface. And then we'll be able to look at these are what we call the Rayleigh waves. The Rayleigh waves, they are also accompanied by love waves. These are the ones that are found are moving on earth surface whereas we also have these waves they are primary and secondary waves the p and s the primary and secondary waves normally uh, try to strike the crustal rocks as they move or they cause vibration within the crustal rocks and as a result of that they uh, cause maybe uh, the vibration of the earth crust to form. And then when these 
waves occur, especially the Rayleigh waves, when they move into the ocean. They generate a massive, uh, a massive waves in the ocean that we refer to them as the tsunami. We refer to them as the tsunami or tsunamis when the waves goes to the level of into the ocean or into the seas they generate what you call the tsunami and actually when you look at the tsunamis there are very much enormous waves into the ocean that may cause the crustal rocks under the ocean that is the oceanic crust to vibrate at a very um, a very higher intensity on the earth on the earth crust or the oceanic crust and then causing various effects that can be felt even human being always also feels the earthquakes and at the end of the time there is a devastating effect of these waves anyway those are how the earthquakes are they we have been able to look at the meaning of an, an earthquake. We have also been able to look at the earth tremor and the tsunami. But what normally causes the earthquake? That is my question. What normally causes the earthquake? Therefore, we are going to look at the causes of the earthquake. the causes of earthquakes or the seismic waves what normally causes there are different types of causes we can be able to understand we will classify them into two because we have natural causes we have natural causes and then we also have uh, human causes We have the natural causes of earthquake as well as human causes of earthquake. Therefore, we'll be able to look at the natural causes of earthquake so that we'll be able to look and how they are caused. We'll be able to find out what are these causes of natural earthquakes, the natural causes of earthquake. The earth tremors or earthquakes can be caused by tectonic movement. That is one. We look at tectonic movement. And how does this movement surely result into the earthquake? These are the natural causes. The natural causes... Uh, surely when the plates move towards each other or when they move away from each other there is a sudden energy that is always released into the crustal rocks and therefore they generate what we call the seismic waves and these seismic waves can either be felt into the ocean that is through the oceanic crust or they can also be felt on the crustal rocks that is where human beings have built their houses for example into the oceanic crust uh, the regions that surrounding the japan environment or the japan country there is a lot of shaking because it is into the ocean there are lots, there's a lot of tsunamis affecting this country that is known as Japan. Because when a tsunami occurs, it produces a very devastating effect on, on the oceanic uh, environment. And therefore, it may lead to the destruction of some of the properties or even the build houses and eventually may lead to the laws of life. That is the tectonic movement. I have said that when the continents, when the continents moves away, or 
when the continent moves away or into each other when these continents moves away or they just move into each other they will result into the energy there will be an energy that is released this energy will be released uh, into the crust of rocks which will result into vibration there will be vibration on the crust of rocks and these vibrations are the one that we refer to them as the earthquakes or we refer to them as the seismic waves that is more about the tectonic movement uh, allow me maybe to illustrate because there are various types of movement of the plates when this plate moves closer or past into each other for example this is one plate and then this is the second plate when this plate moves and actually in the in the in the in the sense that they are going to collide uh, you will find that there will be some tensional forces we refer to them as tectonic forces which will result into the energy released into the crust of rocks causing these rocks to vibrate and as a result of that they cause what we call the seismic waves that is one of the cause that is referred to as tectonic uh, movement let's look at the second cause it is the gravitative or gravitational pressure we have the gravitational pressure How does the force of gravity or gravitational pressure cause the earthquake? In the previous lesson, we were able to look at the force of gravity and how it may affect some of the internal movement of the earth. Today, we find out that the gravitational pressure that is generated in the interior of the earth crust as a result of the hollows that were been left during the volcanic eruption during that balancing of the force of the gravity the underground chambers are made or are forced to collapse and as a result of that in the process of those underground voids collapses when they collapses uh, those crust of rocks will lead into the shaking, uh, the shaking of the crusts. The earth crust will be shaken in the form of the force of gravity trying to balance the empty magma chambers that were left, especially during the volcanic activity. When those magma have escaped and they have left a void, or an empty vacuum that has not been felt. Therefore, it is the force of gravity will generate gravitational pressure, leading to those magma chambers collapsing. And in the process of collapsing, they may lead to the energy that is released into the earth crust, therefore causing the earth crust to shake. And in the process of shaking, they are generating what you call the vibrations. Those vibrations are the one that we refer to them as the earthquakes. That is part number two of the natural cause. Let's look at the, the third part. The third category that lead to the causes of um, an earthquake. We also have isostatic isostatic adjustment isostatic adjustment from the word isostasy we'll be able to look at um, the isostatic adjustment force this is a force that may force the crust of rocks 
to move either upwards or downwards and in the process of moving up and down they may result into the breaking of the rocks and in the process of those rocks breaking or disintegrating there is a wave that is generated those waves that are generated will always cause the crust of rocks to vibrate and as a result of that they generate what we call the shock waves this vibration may result into the shock waves which these shock waves are also known as the earthquake the shocks that are produced by vibration these shock waves are known as the earthquakes they can be either are the tremor or the seismic waves vibrating the crustal rocks that is the third category of isostatic adjustment another natural cause another natural cause another natural cause include volcanicity that is number four In the previous part, we looked at volcanicity and how it affects the crustal movement. Actually, volcanicity generates two types of movement, and we learned about the horizontal earth movement and the vertical earth movements. These movements in the process, especially the sudden and violent movement that are produced by the violent explosion as a result of volcanic eruption they will always lead to the generation of vibrations uh, those shock waves will be produced because they involve some of this movement involved tectonic movements and as a, as a result of that they lead into the formation of these shock waves that are going to be mounted into what we call the seismic waves. They are going to mount up into what we know as the seismic waves. As a result of that, both the horizontal and the vertical movement, we call them the orogenic and epirogenic movement will always lead to the formation of the shock waves. And these shock waves will result into seismic waves, which are a part of the earthquakes. They are felt either in the ocean or they are also felt into the they are also felt into, into the um, crustal oceans and also they are also felt into the ocean and also the crustal rocks. It's okay. Let's move on and look at the other. Let's move on and look at the other. Uh, the other causes of earthquake that is number six that is the energy released into the mantle we look at the energy that is released into the mantle There are various forms of energy that can be released into the mantle, especially during the formation of the earth. We learned about the radioactive or radioactivity. We have the radioactive elements that are found in the interior of the earth crusts. These radioactive elements 
are always in constant reaction. They are always in constant reaction with other elements because there are so many elements that are found within the earth crust. When this reaction takes place in particular areas, areas of the mantle, they lead into the formation of energy. This energy that is released into the mantle is the one that is going to cause what we call the seismic wave. The release of energy into the mantle will result into the formation of the seismic waves. As a result of that, some earthquake will be felt. And this one may reach into the earth crust in form of earthquakes. That is about, we have around, uh, that is five natural causes of earthquake. We have been able to look at one of the causes as the tectonic movement. We have been able also to look at the gravitational pressure. Then another one we have looked at the isostatic adjustment. We have looked at volcanicity and the energy which is always released into the mantle may cause the seismic waves to be generated. And as a result of that, the seismic waves will cause vibration on earth crust or within the earth's uh, surface and they will be detected as either earth tremors or earthquakes. If they occur into the ocean, they may generate what we call the tsunamis. Now, we have been able to look at the natural causes. Do human causes also have an effect or have a hand in the cause of earthquakes? Yes, indeed, we also have human causes of earthquake. There are some human activities that we do carry out in our daily lives. They may lead into the formation of earthquakes without us knowing. For example, let's look at various human activities that may lead to the formation of earthquake. Uh, in our daily lives, we make what we call explosives. This explosive may come in form of nuclear tests or nuclear bombs. Because we are a country that want to prove that we have advanced technology, sometime in the nuclear activities we generate what we call the nuclear bombs. The more advanced countries, when they have made the nuclear bombs, now like the North Korea and South Korea, they go further to test those bombs. In the process of testing these nuclear bombs, what will be the result? The testing of these bombs, we call them the nuclear bombs, will always release what we call vibrations which will cause the seismic waves. When we test the nuclear bombs underground, there is a lot of vibration that have been released that will lead into the formation of the vibrations leading to the seismic wave, especially in the regions where we are trying to test. It can be in the desert, but underground. Some of the nuclear bombs are tested underground to see the magnitude over which a certain bomb 
can explode on the environment. Therefore, that one will always generate earthquakes. Yeah, that is an explosive. We also have other activities away from explosive. If you are in a place where there is what we call the, the movement of the train. Where we have the movement of train. Actually, when the train moves, especially the initially original train that could drag a large cargo of loads, this movement of the train generates a lot of shockwaves which are felt in limited distances. When the train is passing in a particular region, you remember the train uses a railway and in the railway line a railway line is joined with an iron metal which is left with some gaps in between so that to allow the expansion and contraction during the high temperatures the metal will expand therefore covering this space while in the cold temperatures when the temperature falls the metal may contract and therefore leaving those gaps perhaps when the train comes to pass through this railway line you will find that that bearing of whenever it find these gaps it generate what you call vibrations therefore this is a metal by conduction those vibrations are ascend in a different direction and therefore they will be felt causing what we call the movement or the vibrations of the earth because the railway is actually attached on the earth crust and as a result of that there will be generation of the shock waves that will be generated because of the movement of the train indeed the train when the train moves it generates what we call the earthquake and the train is a man-made line that where it is used to, to, to ferry or transport some goods, especially the bulky goods from one particular region to another, in the process of moving the train. When the train moves from one point to another, carrying bulky goods or cargoes, we will find that when the bearing of the railway, of the train, meets with the gaps that are found on the railway line, they will always hit one another generating tensional forces which will result into the formation of the vibrations that are going to be felt in the earth crust and that will cause some earthquakes to unlimited areas okay that is much more about the train we have been able to look at the train movement as a way of as part that causes in earthquake we also have another part that is done by human we have quarrying and quarrying we'll find that most of the time the quarrying activity we use what we call the explosives Explosive are used to strike some crust or rock so that they disintegrate into smaller pieces that we are able to carry them and use them for particular purposes. These stones, such as the granites, when they are quarried, they are disintegrated. 
they are disintegrated into small pieces as a result of that disintegration sometime the hardest rock especially the granite we use the explosive because we explored the basement of where this rock is so that we make it split into various pieces by the use of explosions or explosive once you set an explosive on earth crust especially into the granite rocks basement it will release a certain pressure or a certain force that will disintegrate the rocks and the waves will continue running into the other rocks leading into the formation of what we call the seismic waves the seismic waves will be generated into the rock basement and as a result of that they will lead to some sudden movement of earth crusts that are referred to as earthquakes or earth tremors that is a human activity also the last part of the human activity that we may thought of sometime we construct the construction of um, large reservoirs for the purpose of water when these large reservoirs are constructed so as to trap water or to store water especially the man-made lakes there is a lot of weight that is generated by the dikes when these dikes generate a lot of weight on the ground they can lead to the transmission of seismic waves the seismic waves will be transmitted and as a result of that we will be able to find to some region of where these large reservoirs like the lakes man-made lakes like in africa we have lake kariba in egypt we have uh, a swan high dam these are some of the man-made lakes we call them the large reservoirs that are used to trap water when the weight is exerted or generated by the dikes it will transmit what we call the earthquakes or the seismic waves by uh, creating what we call faulting which is faulting part of the volcanicity it result into the shaking of the earth crust and that shaking is what we call an earthquake or an earth tremor however like we are also have some dam in USA that have been generated especially when we go in Netherlands there are huge dams that have been constructed as a result of that but when you place a lot of dikes here there will be a balance and that is why in this environment we have to be very much sensitive in matters of construction so that we do not generate the faulting which will result into the shaking of the earth crust as a result of the seismic waves that is how some of the earthquakes are caused we have been able to see both the natural causes and the human causes of earthquake now let us dig deeper into these earthquakes We also have various types of earthquakes. Or we can also call them the quake waves. There are actually three types of the quake waves. 
that are considered in the whole world, if you study them very carefully, will have one type as the primary waves. We have the primary waves, and then we also have the second one is the secondary waves. And then lastly, we have the longitudinal waves. The primary waves are referred to as they can be written in short form as capital P. Then the secondary waves can be written as capital S. The longitudinal waves uh, can be written as the capital L. These are the three types of uh, quake waves that we do encounter them in our daily lives. These quake waves are quite important for us to be able to know. Uh, when we demonstrate them in a diagram, we'll be able to understand them better by looking at how the primary waves begin. The primary waves begin this way and then they result into the secondary waves that will also result into longitudinal waves along the course. We look at this point. These are what we call the P waves. And then these are what we call the S waves. The secondary waves. And then the longitudinal waves, they are the one that strikes directly at a given angle. They strike the earth surface at a very sharp point. This is where we have the, our A, that is the primary waves, and this becomes the secondary waves, and this becomes the longitudinal waves. When you demonstrate them on a graph, especially we'll be able to look at the measurement of the quake waves, we'll be able to understand how the graphical information can be used to detect various types and various magnitude of waves. But diagram diagrammatically, these are referred to the primary waves. Look at the secondary waves and the longitudinal waves. They strike at a certain angle that is very much acute, while the secondary waves have an angle around 45 degrees, where the primary waves are now the ones that are beginning to strike the earth surface. Therefore, how are these waves measured? Measurement of waves. How do we know a certain area or a certain region has been stricken by this type of, uh, or a certain measurement of these waves? We are looking at the measurement of the earthquakes, the occurrence of the seismic waves is measured by a certain instrument, and we have uh, that instrument is called the seismograph. We have an instrument that refers to as the seismograph. The function of a seismograph is to send the impulses. This one sends or detects the impulses of the quake waves that are received here. And eventually they send these impulses into a scale, into two scales. 
the seismograph has got two scales and one of the scale is referred to as the seismometer then the seismometer will translate these into two types of scales here that are referred to as the Macaulay scale was discovered by a scientist called Macaulay therefore we refer to it as Macaulay scale and another one is the richer scale what is the work of um, the Macaulay scale measures the intensity of the earthquake that is the intensity of the earthquake therefore the impulses of the intensity of the earthquake will be signaled to the seismometer through a seismograph and then will be detected to a certain level of the intensity then we will be able to tell the intensity of the earthquake while the magnitude of the earthquake is determined by what we call the richer scale magnitude the richer scale detect the magnitude the weight at which the quake struck or struck the earth surface or of some of the vibration will have to identify the magnitude and some of this magnitude can be very much destructive they can also be very much friendly in a certain area they cannot cause a lot of destructions but it is the intensity and the magnitude of the earthquake that will dis that will determine whether the earthquake that occurred was having enormous effect or just some mild effect that can be uh, can be overcome and as a result of that we'll be able to look at um, we look at how it causes and how it's the effect is felt Question lines are going to be damaged this property remember if governments have been involved in putting up the communication lines these lines are going to be destroyed and it will lead into death also human being will lose life especially there are some regions that have experienced earthquake over the earth you remember the tsunami that occurred in japan along the indian plate it led into the massive loss of life many people died around to a tune of 3000 that is we call it the loss of life and properties are damaged especially along the coastal regions also in the regions that are prone to earthquake we shall be able to look at them the regions that are prone to earthquake these regions have restricted development because we are putting up with the measures restricted development of some regions this is also an effect and that is why in in the area in the country like haiti there is very few development in this country because at a given time it was just recently 2004 and 2008 there was an earthquake that occurred in Haiti restrict development because there's also uh, some elements of it occurring one more uh, one more time and as a result of that it will lead into such effects let us look for more effects of earthquake the earthquakes may also trigger what we call faulting and we'll able to understand 
we'll be discussing what is faulting in the next lesson. Faulting and folding will be caused. The earthquake may trigger. It is a triggering effect of faulting and fault folding of the earth crust and also it may also lead to volcanicity. Some of the volcanic activities have been caused by the earthquakes. And lastly, we'll be able to look at the, the shaking of the earth crust. The shaking of the earth crust may also uh, trigger what we call the landslides. Some regions may experience landslides which are very much detrimental to both plants and animals. Both plants and animals are destroyed because of landslides. What is the, uh, the cause of the uh, landslide? The shaking of the earth crusts will lead to landslides. And in these regions, plants, both plants and animals, have been affected. In the regions where the earthquake occurs, there is always also what we call the permanent displacement. Permanent displacement of people. People are displaced permanently. That is what we call that displacement of permanent displacement has been caused by what you call the earthquake. And as a result of that, in the regions where the people have been destroyed, you will learn that nobody will be able, will be glad and will be happy to find a habitation in those environments. And these are various reasons why earthquake occurs and their effect we have been able to look at them there are very uh, many effects of earthquake when they whenever they occur that one will lead us uh, to find out various effects of earthquake we have been able to look at them i would like us to finalize by looking at uh, this assignment i'll be able to give out the assignment that is one What is earthquake? Two. Differentiate. We'll have to differentiate between the intensity the intensity and magnitude magnitude of quake waves and then i'll also give us the last question or maybe that we are able to look at um, um types of earthquake identify Identify types of earthquake. My last question will be looking at um, explain three effects, three effects of earthquake. This is an assignment for us to recapture out this lesson. We are recapturing out this lesson of we have been able to look at the earthquake. Then what is an earthquake? 
you will be able to respond and then you will have to differentiate between the intensity and the magnitude of the quake waves and then you will also have to identify types of earthquakes identify types of earthquake and then lastly you explain three effects you explain three effects of earthquakes and then from that point we'll be able to meet in the next lesson as we'll be looking uh, continuing looking at volcanicity have a good day thank you